the Model Y standard range is finally here. I've put all this info together in this video, hopefully to earn your like and subscribe, but also to start the conversation. People are really trying to decide and get off the fence one way or another. So if you have thoughts and comments, please drop them below. I'm also going to provide some example customers in the five topics I'm about to cover. Starting with price. You can do the cross comparisons for yourself. Tesla's site is actually very convenient for that, but you should know that there is an $8,000 price difference between the two models, and you're looking at $80 a month extra if you're going to be leasing it, and about $120 a month extra if you're financing it. Number two, range. This is probably the biggest factor between the two cars. The long range gets 326 miles on a full charge. The standard range gets 244 miles. This equates to roughly one hour worth of extra driving on a road trip before you need to stop and pull over and charge. But let me explain this just a little bit further. Tesla doesn't explain very well the difference between rated range and real range. When you're on a road trip, there are other factors that will drain your car battery. You might have extra people in the car making it heavier. You might be using heat or air conditioning. You might have extra cargo in the back. You might be listening to music or using seat heaters or maybe charging your phones or maybe it's cold outside and the colder weather makes the battery perform less. There are a lot of things that can affect how much range you actually will get out of the car. A good rule of thumb is estimate about 12% less than what your car's readout is telling you. And this is probably pretty close to where you're going to wind up on a trip. So on a road trip, instead of 326 miles, expect 287 miles on a long range Model Y. So ask yourself these questions. Do you rarely drive? Are you budget conscious? Do you travel by air or maybe do you already have a road trip car and you're not gonna use your Tesla? Sounds like the standard range might be more for you. Now, do you drive frequently out of town and you want to do it in your car and you want to use autopilot on your longer trips? Is budget not as much a concern and the price is not really something you're worried about? Sounds like the long range might be exactly what you're looking for. Number three, performance. There's a very small difference between the two models. Being at 5.3 seconds versus 4.8 seconds and how long it takes the car to reach 60 miles an hour at its best performance. Both will feel like a strong car. Teslas feature instant torque as opposed to the acceleration of a gas vehicle. And when you experience the instant torque of a Tesla, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get to 60 miles an hour, that initial push from the motors is max torque immediately, and it will lurch you back in your seat every time. It's just a matter of how much it lurches you back in your seat. Fourthly, all wheel drive versus real wheel drive. And checking in real fast, have I earned your like and subscribe yet? All wheel drive customers usually come from climates where they're a lot more worried about something like snow in the winter, or maybe from environments where there's a lot more gravel or loose roads that they're gonna be driving on. All wheel drive customers usually need their cars to be gripping the road. If you live somewhere in the city or you live somewhere like I do in Las Vegas and you're not going to be going off-roading that much, you probably don't actually have a huge need for an all wheel drive vehicle. If you live somewhere where it snows frequently or rains frequently, or you don't have very clear roads, Having an all-wheel drive car can sometimes make a night and day difference. And I have many friends that will never buy a car unless it's all-wheel drive, simply for the safety factor. The all-wheel drive also has a dual motor powertrain. There's a motor in the front and a motor in the back. If one of them ever dies, the other one is actually powerful enough to operate the car until you can take it to a service center. This is also especially interesting if you're the kind of person to keep your car for a long time, maybe 10 years or maybe 20 years or longer. Having the dual motor will benefit you someday if one of the motors ever do happen to give out. Keep in mind the motors are rated for a million miles each minimum. On the same topic, it's worth noting that even with the real real drive cars, Teslas are very bottom heavy. Teslas have a very low center of gravity thanks to that extremely heavy battery in the center of the car. So even the rear wheel drive cars are particularly safe. Number five, resale value. There are three factors that are going to pit a long range all wheel drive Model Y over a standard range rear wheel drive. And those are going to be the all wheel drive, extra range, and the performance. All of these three factors are going to benefit the resale value when you're done with your car. If you're leasing, this doesn't apply to you. If you're buying your car, then Tesla is working on new technology all the time. Think about today with the 244 mile range being the smallest range that Tesla offers. When Tesla first made cars, their longest range car was right around 280 miles on a full charge in a Model S. Today, the new Model S Plaid gets 520 miles on a full charge. And we're at nine years later, do the math of what the difference might be in five years if you're selling your Model Y or nine years, and 244 miles might be a lot less attractive than 326 miles. So if you're someone concerned about keeping the car a long time and wanting it to be relevant in the future, 
the longer the range, the more relevant it'll be longer. Checking in one more time, have I earned your like and subscribe? Let me know in the comments below which of these factors is most important to you. And let me know if you're deciding between standard range or long range and why. One more comment here. I was asked recently if I was going to buy a Model Y, would I get a standard range Model Y with full self-driving or get a long range Model Y without? And the answer to this is very simple. I'd get the long range without full self-driving. You can always add full self-driving later you can't upgrade your rear wheel drive to an all wheel drive long range later. So to me, I would much rather deal with the extra range, extra performance, extra features. And then if I ever decide I have more money in the future to buy the full self driving, then I'll do that. Or maybe I'd even consider the subscription model coming up soon. I recommend checking out my video up here on the different wheels that Tesla makes for the Model Y. Thank you sincerely for watching.